Hey everybody, my name is Joe Patrick with Dirty South Soccer, here for the first ever Football Manager Scouting Series on Dirty South Soccer's YouTube channel, so very excited to bring this to you guys in video format. Um, first of all, just wanted to kind of get this teed up for anybody who's unfamiliar with the game or what we do here. Basically, we just look for players through the Football Manager database for players that Atlanta United could, might be interested in. Um... It has kind of worked out in the past. Uh, we did find Ezekiel Barco, although he wasn't that hard to find. He was one of the highest rated Argentine or uh, Argentine player, young players in the in the database. So um, maybe an obvious one, but hey, it's fun to do this stuff, and maybe we can open our eyes up to some players, even if they don't end up at, at in Atlanta United uh, colors. So, um, but basically, first of all, the reason we like to do this is because Football Manager they network with real life people who follow these teams. So. Um, here you can see we're on uh, Velez, um, Velez Sarsfield's uh, home screen here, and, and Football Manager will likely have an, a relationship with a journalist or um, a season ticket holder or somebody who closely follows the team and can give their opinions on some of the players. So, like, if we were to go into the squad and click on a player, this guy, uh, okay, he doesn't have that many traits. Um just wonder if there's someone so like you have the stats and all that but you also have you know specific player traits like you know what how they like to move the ball these are all things that you know real life people have kind of scouted these these players and given their opinions on so that's why we like to use football manager for a reference and just to explain what we're going to do here um, basically we're going to look at a couple different countries we're going to look in this episode about Argentina and just look basically at their players with the highest rate of potential. So I have access to um, an in-game editor where I can actually see how high the player's potential is coded in. Um, you wouldn't normally see that if you didn't look in, in this little editor system that they have. Uh, but every player has a coded potential. So um, in any given game, they might not reach that potential, but we can actually, at least we can see kind of how the player, the people who rated these players see their potential as, if that makes sense. So we're going to look at just some of the highest rated um, guys in Argentina, and then we will look at some other guys as well in some different videos. And if you guys have any, you know, requests for who, who like a group, a certain group of players you want to see, just let us know. We can continue to make these. Like if you wanted to see um, the highest potential Argentine right backs or something like that, like that's one we pr we might end up doing because. Uh, Atlanta United could use a right back right now. So, um, but right now we're just going to look at the overall highest rated players. So let's start looking at them right now. The first player, the first player we're going to look at is uh, also my favorite player because of his name, Kevin McAllister. You may know him from his hits in Home Alone, Home Alone Two. I think there was a Home Alone Three. Um, yeah, pretty funny that there's a guy named Kevin McAllister who is actually Argentinian, as you can see, playing for Boca Juniors, but. Hey, first guy we run into, he's a right back, which is obviously a position of need for Atlanta United, um, who has just sent John Gallagher on loan, so even maybe more of a need. There's really no clear right back behind Franco Escobar on this team, so could be a position of interest for the club, um, and here's a guy who would fit the bill for a very solid right back. As you can see here in, in these uh, attributes, um, these highlighted ones are ones are are attributes that the game would consider, you know, a need for this position at right back. If you click around to different positions, you would see these highlighted attributes change color based on the position that you're looking at. But as a right back, you know, Kevin McAllister, very good player, um, pretty solid in all areas you would want him to be in. You can kind of see where I've got thresholds. So the green, I just, you, so you can, the green shows that that's like a better attribute for him. The yellows are kind of intermediate. The purples are on the lower end, and then there's some that are grayed out. But Kevin McAllister is so good, he doesn't have any grayed out ratings. So um, pretty decent right back here. You can see if YouTube these guys for sure, and you can get even better looks at kind of what they might bring. Um, let's just take a look at his background. Came from Argentinos Juniors. Um, just, you know, just went to Boca. I guess he's there on loan right now, it looks like. So he's not even... Doesn't not even on a contract with Boca Juniors, it doesn't seem, although he doesn't have an optional future fee, so they might buy him. That could be a bit of trouble if Atlanta United wanted to bring him in. If he signs a deal with Boca Juniors, then that's going to be off the table. Yeah, here it is on loan from Argentinos Juniors. Um, 
Other than that, not a lot to talk about. This guy isn't the highest rated in terms of his potential, but he certainly looks like a guy who could get the job done. And, you know, when you're looking at right backs, they might not have the highest ratings uh, potentials in the game. You know, you're going to see those the high, very high potential players as like attacking midfielders and game changer type of position. So this guy very looks very much looks like he could fit the bill for Atlanta United uh, and is a solid right back option. All right, the next guy we're going to look at is uh, Nicholas, ooh, and I don't know how to pronounce this, Nicholas, I'm going to say it's taller. I don't think they do the th sound in uh, <laughs> in Argentina. Maybe they do. Who knows? Someone correct me in the comments, please. Okay, I'm going to talk about something else, like the fact that he's a 19-year-old center back who seems to be pretty good in pretty much all the areas you want. Um, pretty decent prospect here. Also, another interesting aspect of this guy is that he comes from Lanús. Um, by the way, sorry, I don't have all the logos and stuff programmed in loaded into this game um, but obviously clearly you here you can see he's been at Lanus for a long time and is just starting to make his break into the first team made eight appearances in 2017-2018 um, so oh, I just went back to McAllister um, pretty interesting looking prospect here um, here you can see oh, I should you know I, I should have done this for McAllister but another different way to look at um, their ratings here is to look at their little radar and here you can see, you know, that's a pretty good radar for a young center back. He's kind of a, I guess you would consider this kind of like a no-nonsense center back. His vision is kind of lacking. His, his te technical skills is a little bit lower than, you know, you would see from a guy who's like a real ball-playing midfielder or a ball-playing center back. Um, and you can see that, you know, pretty low technique, low passing. But he's very good. You know, he's looks like he's a big guy. Um they don't have his height and weight on this screen. I don't know exactly where to find it either, but uh, yeah, decent looking option. I don't know if Atlanta United really is interested in looking for a center back, considering you know Florentine Pogba has looked pretty solid. They're pretty set in that position. Miles Robinson has made a huge leap this year, but if they ever wanted to, you know, go this route, this is a guy they could target. All right, next on the list here is Christian Ferreira. Now, this guy is really interesting, and I should say, I, I forgot to mention this off the top, we're going from the lowest potential to the highest potential, at least the way they're coded into the game. Um, but this guy may have some higher potential in real life than the game is coded in um, for a couple reasons. One, well, mainly for one reason, is that he play, he ended up playing uh, with Ezequiel Barco and Argentina in the U-20 World Cup. In fact, he even scored a goal, so made a very good uh, impression there. Um, and you can see his ratings are very good for an 18-year-old. A driven personality is something you like to see in a player. Also, this determination is going to be something that affects every player in the game, and usually determination signifies how quickly or how often they will fulfill their highest potential. So that's always good to see. Obviously, it's a very subjective thing rated by somebody who's watching them from outside. But, I mean, look at these stats, his technique, his passing, his long shots, his first touch. I mean, this is like your classic um, Argentine, skillful, attacking midfielder. And, in fact, this guy is probably going to be out of Atlanta United's price range. This guy would probably be a, a designated player. And I don't think Atlanta United is going to be able to sign a designated player anytime soon, even though even if they are, um, even if they do get rid of Tito Vialba, I don't think it's going to happen. But the guy, Christian Ferreira here, is from River Plate. That's a team that Atlanta United has done deals with in the past. Um, these stats I don't think are right. I believe he has made some first-team appearances. Um, but we'll check up on that. Anyway, very good-looking player here. Not a lot of bad attributes at all. Um, especially when it comes down to the ones that you that are the clear these green these so that you will see these highlighted attributes and then there's some that are blue and some that are green. The greens are the ones that are more important than the blues, although the blues are still more important than the ones that aren't highlighted. But as you can see, I mean, just very good attacking midfielder. Um, very interesting. I wonder if uh, Zachiel Barco maybe talked to this guy when he was at World Cup when he was on World Cup duty. Who knows? Um, but yeah. One to keep your eye on right here. If he doesn't go to Atlanta United, this guy could be definitely on his way to, you know, a better team in Europe. All right. The fourth player we're looking at here is Martin Ojeda from Rossin Klub. Um, pretty much your standard uh, left winger. At least that's the way he's coded in the game. When I looked at his YouTube videos, it looked like he, he had a little bit more to his game than just being kind of your boots on the touchline winger, uh, but that is the way he's coded here. As, as you can see, his role in duty, his preferred role in duty is on the left. You know, not not too much of a difference if you're kind of as a left mid midfielder or left attacking midfielder, pretty much the same thing. 
And uh, as you can see, his preferred foot over here is um, is left only, which basically means he's only going to use his left foot, as you might imagine. As for his attributes, you know, crossing, dribbling, those are the things you want to see from, from a winger, his technique. Um, his acceleration and pace are some of his better his better attributes, but, you know, they're not super high, so he's not a blazer, and that's kind of what I saw in his in his highlights was he was more of a passer, more of a distributor than um, than a than a winger who's going to want to like take someone on one on one. Um, even though his dribbling is very high, he just seemed more like a a passer distributor to me. So uh, interesting looking guy. I don't think at the end. Let's see who the game uh, he's wanted by Toulouse for for a transfer in the game. So um, French club there. This guy. Whoops. Sorry about that. Um, Ojeda does have a higher rating. I'm sorry, he doesn't have a higher rating than Ferreira. So he, they're on the same kind of uh, potential rating scale. Um, and decent looking guy. At the end of the day, I doubt that he's a realistic target for Atlanta United just because if you look at his club, just Ross and Club, they're not a, a team that Atlanta United has dealt with before. Doesn't necessarily rule them out completely, but probably not as likely as maybe some others would. Um, whenever you're thinking about transfers, you always have to think about who the club might have a relationships with um, and and maybe have done deals with in the past or, or executives at certain clubs that may have a relationship that always plays a role in these, in these transfers. So it doesn't mean this guy's necessarily completely out of the picture. That's what you know, we're, we're covering him because he is one of the highest rated potential players, but you know, probably not as likely as maybe some of these other guys. All right, and the fifth and final player we're going to cover in this video today is Thiago Almada. This guy is the crown jewel of the players that we are covering. Um, as you can see, he's he's just more thoroughly scouted in general, um, which probably means he's made more senior team appearances. Well, I don't think they're tracking these for a lot of these Argentine players in the game. Um, but you can see, you you can kind of tell he's he's been more thoroughly scouted because you, if you look at his player traits down here, you'll you'll see several things that he likes to do, which means that someone out there in the network has taken the time to put that in the game um, and has taken notice that he does these things. He is the highest rated player, uh, rated potential player um, in Argentina of, of this category um, of un players under the age of 25 in the game. So as you can see, he's just he just looks like your typical kind of all-around midfielder, good first touch, good technique, good passing, um, decisions, flair is very important for attacking midfielders. Um, and you can see he wants to go through the middle. He wants to try the killer balls. Uh, he wants to shoot. You know, he he's just a, very much your classic attacking midfielder and looks like a very, very good player um, at only 17 years old. I mean, this guy is like, this guy looks like Ezekiel Barco to me. And it's funny, if you look at the team that is wanted, that wants him, it's Perry Saint-Germain. So, which is, you know, when you looked at Ezekiel Barco's profile back when he was with Independiente, the teams that wanted him were Paris Saint-Germain, Manchester United, AC Milan, those types of teams. So um, looks like a very good player here. Let's just take one look at his radar. Yep, very good. Very. That, this is really great for a 17-year-old to have that vision, that technique, and this mental. Um, you know, that's kind of the usually the last thing that kind of fills up a player's uh, radar or his just his general attributes. Um, are those mental attributes, and you can see they're already very good. The decision is very good, anticipation very good, composure very good, all for 17 years old. I mean, he this guy is going to, in football manager at least, this guy is going to become an elite player. So um, there you go. There's five players that Atlanta United could target. Also, one last thing to talk about with Almada is uh, he plays for Velez, who is a team that um, Atlanta United has done deals with before. In fact, we might as well just go look at Velez since I am the manager of Velez uh, in the save that I made, and look at Yamil Assad, who, was, who, who, who would definitely be another target for Atlanta United. I wonder who's interested in him in the game. Uh, River. At the end of his contract, which he is coming up on, um, which makes him a player that Atlanta United could definitely target. Goodness gracious, I keep on misclicking. Um, here you can see, you know, Classic, tries killer balls often, likes to cut in from the wing. Very good player, Yamil Assad is as well. It's amazing that he's not getting more play with Velez, but Velez is a very good team. I, I do want to point out one more guy who we called out, who I found in the last FM scouting series, is this guy, Matias Vargas. He's 21 years old, um, just very, very good attacking midfielder. They say he plays on the left here as like an inverted midfielder, in, inverted winger. 
Um, maybe so. I mean, he could probably play anywhere across the front line. He's just very good. Um, you do have to kind of wonder about, you know, his salary here is pretty high, you know, because he would need a raise to come into MLS. And he, if he's already on 330K, which is, of course, an estimate, nobody knows for sure what his salary is. But, um, you know, that could be a sticking point. But there are a few guys you can uh, feast your eyes on from Argentina. Again, if you guys want me to focus on any other players or positions in general, um, just let me know. Let, me, let us know in the comments and so we can do more videos on these guys. Um, but for now, there is your wrap-up of the highest-rated potential Argentine players.